Mm-hmm. Oof. All right, here we go. Oh. Ah! Dude, crack that bitch open. Actually, wait, first, let's do one, two, three, Matt. Just say the number one, do nothing else. Don't. One, two, three. That's so far fucking behind. Like, it's so... Dude, God damn we, it, dude. we talk about this every single time. And it's never a problem. <laughs> it always works out fine. I don't know, man. There's just something about it. There's just something about it. it ticks which, me out. Which man. thing are we talking about now? The fact Steve that I, is always like half a second or a second or two <coughs> seconds behind me whenever I say a, my it's line. Not a second or two oh, seconds. fuck you, Wait, really? <laughs> oh, my. Jesus. So, uh, what? We're going to address this in Kane first? No. Wait, let me let me All fucking right. introduce you, Matt. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yourself. Damn. God, get Don't sit have your a ass Red down. Bull aneurysm. Jeez. All right, boys. Let's crack. Ah, oh, yes. Anyways, welcome to episode eight. Eight. Eight of the podcast. It's here we have our H-A. of tall and taller, and here we have a not so tall guy. At least, if it were tall, six tall, foot. Tallest. But if if it was if, well if this podcast was tall taller and tallest Steve would be tallest I'd be taller and you'd be tall. It's the the tall the tall the taller the tallest. Yeah, well, and the I mean, medium just, height. Ju- yeah, you're the medium <laughs> height. I mean, you're you're still taller than average. I'm just saying in the in the in the oh, like, yeah. presentation of this podcast you would be the shortest. Well, because Steve is fucking weird. I'm like yeah. a bit. I'm a bit taller than av- taller than average. And you're just like average for tall people, I guess. Well, average yeah, I guess. <laughs> Six, seven, is that the average for tall people? Is there a yeah. medical history like recording of that anywhere? I don't yeah. know, man. Maybe. Anyways, yeah. Today we have some interesting things going on. First off, well, we didn't let's just introduce Matt. Matt, introduce yourself. Oh yeah, Matt, I am Matt, uh, you go Matt ahead. Wilkins. Uh, there's several titles. Uh, uh, I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. I'm a uh, I'm a failed American novelist as well, but Ooh. that's a pretty good thing, actually, in the end. That's savage that. as fuck. You just roasted but, yourself, buddy. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. where we're going. Yeah, the roast compliment. He's admitting defeat. But, he's yeah. Moves on. You gotta admit from defeat to move on. There is no recovering from the past, only the transformation that comes after. I saw, I saw a really funny thing, actually. Well, it wasn't funny. It was kind of inspirational. It's like you got to struggle to improve and it was a picture of Magikarp evolving into Gyarados and that's really funny. It's really funny to me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Who's fucking laugh ass? <laughs> I just like, I feel like that's how you would see motivational quotes is when they're on like Pokemon memes. <laughs> Alright, listen. I'm quitting the podcast. Alex. This is the final episode. Speaking Matt's replacing me. So, before we reco- started recording, Alex and I over text had gotten into it about uh i love it is that what the song is called yes by the little pump video, and kanye west aka it. the best oh. song of 2018 so far and very uh, interesting video Alex was like i love this song and i was like i don't i kind of hate it i don't really like it i feel like it's wrong. it's lines are pretty simplistic without a lot of meaning and it's mainly based off the music video to get its trending Yes, I feel, I like, feel like it wouldn't be big classy. without me and no me and DJ were like listening to it though, and we're like, this is actually a good song. It's it mm. gets stuck in your head because it's it so fucking catchy. Mm. I mean, I it doesn't make it good, but it's also catchy. I hate the little pumps. Like the only contribution little pump <clears throat> has to the song besides his it would make a good radio Same. song if they could play it on the radio, but it wouldn't it. work in mainstream formats. Yeah, so that's oh, why yes. they need the video to sell it. That's what I think. I just felt like I just, it was pur- it was purposely trashy. It was purposely a meme, just for clicks. Now it wasn't supposed to be a meme, though. What What like, do you mean? They're, like, they're dressed no, like, up. Apparently, like, apparently, little pump like went out and bought like forty thousand worth dollars worth of Gucci clothes, and then Kanye walked in. He's like, "Nah, we're wearing this shit." And then they just rolled with it. Like, if you look at the set, the set is pretty fucking, like, weird. So you're telling me that Kanye where, where just where fucking said, fuck that shit. Yeah. I, I read it somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Jamie, 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 pull that up. Yeah. 
Let me let me just look this shit up real quick. Like at that point, if they bought 40k in Gucci clothing and then Kanye walked in with that and said, "We're wearing this." Kanye is now a functioning crackhead and I mean Kanye Kanye thing. is wearing his mother's is name a, on a necklace. Pull it off, Color, yeah. on, like on on Kanye's necklace we'll is his mother's that, name. Yeah. It's his mother's name Donde or Dondi. I, I don't know the pronunciation. Literally just a troll. I feel like Kanye And also, you know you know like you know the girls on the side how it like looks like statues of girls with like all like in like Ziploc bags or like airtight and stuff. Are you about to tell those me are that actual, those are actual okay. Yes, they are Jesus. actual girls. Like it's really fucking weird. And it's kind of unnerving because it's like the video is a meme, but it's a meme purely because they're dressed up wearing fucking Roblox clothes. Yeah. And then like it's like the set is really eerie and creepy if you think about and it. If you if you think about it, Kanye just brought those in because on some level, on little Kanye's pump is a meme that like and Kanye is doing. I, he has the whole time. That There's I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, what I love fuck? that. He's it's mm. like he's looking up like it's like he's following his mother, and he just oh has like. How I think it's of just, it, is it just like, makes me so happy. How I think of it is, he's like, I can make this hot trash, weird ass music video and song, and it's gonna be more popular it's not than trash. anything, uh, anything. Only he can pull of. it off. Yeah, it's not like, hot trash. First of all, I'm I don't fight you on that. Good. Like I feel like it's catchy, and then it's overuses auto tune, and it's not. Like, I think I think a good example for the Twitter like it's there not it's is, not uh, a lyric it's not a lyrical like it's the song isn't lyrical genius like don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I fucking it bangs it's good. I feel like I, it's let me, let me pull up the lyrics right now for a month and then no one ever is gonna give a shit again. Hey, like man. it's that's how memes work, but they got those quick clicks and they got that ad revenue and that's and that's term, how you sell in things. Terms of music, if I if I'm judging something as good, I judge it by like its longevity. Like how we were talking about what, like supposedly he's he's making Watch the Throne two with Jay Z, that Maybe. Watch the Throne has longevity. I consider that a good album. I can listen to that any day and still enjoy it. This song, I don't know about that. I'm or trying to pull up the most, lyrics right now. Going back to what we talked about last week with uh, Mac Miller, most of his album, well, almost all of his albums, I can go back and be like, this shit has longevity. It's good. This song. I don't think that. It's one of those popular songs for a month and then no one's going to give a shit again. I'm going to be listening to this in 20 years and picturing Kanye West wearing a Roblox like costume. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm looking at the lyrics. I'm going to be the one fucking laughing. Uh, let's see. Also, the apparently chorus, 21 Pilots are one. dropping a song, or dropping an album soon, and I'm really excited for that too. 21 Pilots bumps, and nobody can tell me otherwise. My girlfriend already has tickets to their tour that they're gonna have. Well, obviously. Oh, fuck. Did she see oh. them at ACL back then? Yep. That's oh, what that's they got. That's famous. how everyone. They got yeah. famous like at ACL. Yeah, she that's said what. The, the, no, no. I don't know the full level. story. She said yeah, that she went there for them. Like ah uh, yes, she was in the know. Which I get, like I guess I, I believe it. She she's really yeah. She she would, she would definitely be that person. <clears throat> I was. I mean, for, Meredith shows the receipts. The only Shows reason I saw Meredith. 21 Pilots and I had a good spot for 21 Pilots was because of Drake and ASAP Rocky. Yeah, it's because there was like they, it was like in between. It was like glass, I think it was Glass Animals, 21 Pilots, ASAP Rocky, Drake. Those four yeah. artists oh. were incredible because it was just I, them. Alex, I think I saw Drake 21 Pilots then because uh, Nathan was dating. Uh, you remember who? Ah uh, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> me and I think me and Joe got dragged <laughs> along to that. I mean, hey, 21 Pilots Bops. It's all but yeah, it was worth it in the end. Good band <laughs> discovery. And they went mainstream. And I feel like that's the whole ruining point of indie rock is when it goes mainstream. It's no, yeah. Good. Me and me and my roommate were talking about this, actually. Like, like you know um, Harry Styles? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. He, became kind, he became kind of a meme because he was in, a, he was in that one group, One Direction. Yeah. And then, like, he has his own solo album, and it's one of the best albums, like, of that the year it came out. No, he's it's just album. such a good Girls fucking album. album. But like, it's not even that. Like, the album is fucking nice amazing. Yeah, I know. He's that's like that's what I'm trying to say. Singer from a different country, or has a different accent. But that's that's what I'm trying to say. Is he's breaking the stereotype? Like, yeah. he was in a boy band, and sure, he was a heartthrob heartthrob then. Like, I guess. Justin but yeah, he's. But like Harry Styles. Justin Timberlake did the same thing. Like his song "Sign of the Times" is such a fucking good song. What was Justin Timberlake's? band he was in before he his boy band before he went solo and we got his built his own name oh what fuck was, i forgot dude. oh fuck. uh i mean i'm gonna pull that shit up ah uh, yes quick. he was on the new mickey mouse clubhouse as a child in the 90s but he was also in in sync or in sync 
it's insane. So yeah. that J- Justin Timberlake did the same thing. He was in a boy band. He was kind of like the head of the boy band, and then mm-hmm. when it just the bullshit breaking up thing, and he is not Zane thing doing things really too popular. now? Isn't isn't he? What Zane, the one of the other members, isn't he doing things too now? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, like I don't do you know. Spell it? I, oh, I, yeah, I don't he know. Is. Oh. Yeah, I I just looked him up. Apparently, he, he is, his name is all caps, so you know it's a, uh, you know it's I've impressive. I've heard that before, but I know nothing about him. Neither do I. Harry Styles, on the other hand, he was also in fucking. Uh, he was in um Dunkirk, and he did a really fucking good job in Dunkirk. Like I'll give it to him. Oh yeah, I remember that. We did the. Dunkirk I mean, to be guy. fair, Dunkirk. Was yeah, great. Dunkirk's the best. Ooh. Oh, oh, so, you know how we were talking about Tomorrowland the other day? Ah, uh, yes. Dude, that? Okay, well. I didn't think it was that bad. I feel like it was a kid's movie. What, what movie is well, it's, Tomorrowland? Yeah, it's not, it's not that bad of a movie, but it's also just like, what was the point? I just feel like George Clooney kind of s- stepped low with that movie. Like, when I saw George yeah. Clooney's name, I expected more, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. But, like, I, I still don't know the film we're discussing. Going to be Tomorrowland. Entirely it's honest. where... I'll look, uh, look it up we'll, real quick. We yeah. won't dive into too many details, but it's a movie that I had to watch for my film class, and when I mentioned the, it to Alex, he was like, oh, that's hot trash. Yeah, it's just not anything that it could have been. I'm really... It had so it had so much like potential, and they just like chucked it in the trash. I just feel like it was more oriented towards kids. I could tell the meaning of the story 30 minutes into it. I'm like, I'm like the whole meaning of the story was like optimism. In apparently it's a uh, future and shit because it's all about the the chick the girl and how she 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 oh that's not tomorrow she, land i'm yeah, looking at but like, i was watching what, watch- what, what i'm trying to say is that it feels very just hollow like you like exit say like you I, I i still don't know what like the movie is doing i think i accidentally pulled up a video about like Bosnia or something that is not Tomorrowland. <laughs> that is definitely not Tomorrowland. Uh, speaking of movies, let's talk about the movie we said we'd talk about that <laughs> Alex didn't watch. Sorry, um, guys. Alright, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is probably thought of as the most popular movie known ever. And I mean, I, I don't think popular is the right word for it. Popular in the film community. Is the best. No, I mean, best. again, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't I, say best either. I would think it's the most uh, um, influential, I think is the right word. I would say well, and with that influence, influence it, brings a lot of renown to it. No, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's... it's but that's, like, different than popular. Yeah. Like, saying, like, if it's popular, it'd be, like, Lord of the Rings. Okay, so like, I guess most well-known in the film com- community. I feel like... The I mean, it's just yeah, well-known as, like, it pioneered modern film techniques. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, and that's why it's well, famous. The, the, thing, the thing that amazed me the most is when I actually watched it, I was like, okay, this movie's from the 40s. Am I really going to be entertained by a movie from the 40s? But the fact that, that these techniques <laughs> that you're talking about are so impressive that it like makes me feel... It, I enjoyed it more than I expected because I was like, it's an old movie. I don't enjoy it that much. But the, the techniques are so ahead of its time that you can still enjoy it today. And it's almost still relevant today. I thought of Citizen Kane as a character really, really related to Donald Trump. He seems like he seems like a guy who all he wants in his life is for people to like him, but he everything he does does the opposite. Goes against that, yeah. That's how I felt about the movie. And that it's well, still it's also a, in a sense, and it's good. Mm-hmm. A large motif there is in the beginning when he's uh, taken away from his mother, and that at such an early age, and it takes that as the main pivotal like character change then of being so young that he doesn't get those kind of sociable skills and even from the beginning he's still alone there he doesn't have friends or anything at that time when he's taken from his parents so that early on very much affects his character and all that and i guess you can even apply that to psychologically nurture or nature there of if he stayed with his family would he have been better off and happier and more fulfilled in life or in this case is this the top well matt it sounds like you really read up on this I mean, yeah, that's, I, that's I expected we to talk. To. Yeah, you didn't even I, I think some of us tried to. Yeah, you had Sorry, like a guys, week's notice, my man. You had all it's weekend. been a busy week. It's you been a busy Destiny. week. 
Uh, I <laughs> you I agree. if you, smoke bomb. How many how many hours of Destiny do you think you've put in since I told you we we're gonna watch Citizen Kane? I played the fifth. <laughs> I've also been watching Halo lore videos. So oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there's part two. Fuck, dude. I've just been working bleacher construction. It's the did life. you guys know? Did you guys know that if a uh, if a Spartan if a Spartan gets turned into flood, if a Spartan like gets like abducted by the flood, that um like a command code is sent out called corruptor. And that gives like UNSC vessels in the sky to use WMDs. They could literally nuke the surface of the planet to get rid of the Spartan. That's been Alex. Into it's nine thirty here. I'm so tired, and I'm hearing this. It's really hard to put all of this together. You're tired at nine thirty, my man. I just I wake up at like seven each day now, and I just like I go and work out immediately after waking up. Get all that in. I, I do too. I've been I've been trying to do that, anymore. but like this week has been hard because I've been going over to my old roommate's DJ's room and like just chilling out and listening to music. I listen oh, yeah. to the Court of the Crimson King again, and every time I show someone that album, it's really interesting because they say they visualize something, and like some of them say they don't really visualize stuff usually, but this like album is just so like picturesque. Yeah, yeah. I just end up. I've been trying to work the hardest I can or weeks on just anything really. Keep myself busy up here in Dallas, D town. Ah uh, yes, D town. Mm-hmm. How is that? Kind of crazy. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. I was gonna ask Alex how uh, I guess it, it's Phoenix, right? So it's it's P Town. Mm. Where, where, where is? I forget what it's called. Tempe. 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 Fake yeah. Tampa. I actually got into an argument. I mean, not really in an argument. They were just saying <laughs> stuff about how Arizona was amazing, and I'm like, "Fuck Arizona!" And they're like, "But you need to look at all the stuff." And I'm like, "Fuck Arizona!" And they're like, "But it's so beautiful. It's one of you live in the most biodiverse deserts in the planet." And I'm like, "Fuck." But Arizona. you guys also <laughs> don't have even the turquoise coloring that New Mexico has. Yeah, I um, I'm not not a huge fan of Arizona. Y'all, y'all lacking. It, Arizona kind of kind of blows from what I've seen. And then, like, I was like, oh, you guys need to visit Austin. And I was fucking, I was a hype man for Austin, for Texas. Mm-hmm. And then, like, and then so I was like, and then one of them. All the hype things they were telling you, and then you'd come back and be like, no, this is more hype. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. That's my experience with Austin so far, leaving yeah, I mean, like, else in the U.S. And it was, it was, like, half of it was just me, like, memeing, because I knew it would kind of, like, I don't know, I was kind of being an asshole. I was just, like, they were just, like, oh it's so great like this this and this i'm like i know some place that's better yeah, Alex, like ooh. yeah i know i mean it's it's really it's proud. it's kind of a dick you're, thing of you're me to literally do. like the stereotypical <laughs> proud texan who doesn't give a shit about anywhere else but their own home. but that's perfect hey man, no one thing i do that's admit, what our though, culture is, that is my most the, the, the most beautiful place my one of my favorite places on the face of the earth is yosemite and i don't think any place that i will ever visit will ever come close alex if i come visit arizona sheer majesty. If I come visit Arizona, can we go to Sedona? Sedona? Sedona. Sedona. Look up Sedona right now. I'm assuming it's called Sedona. S-E-D-O-N-A. S-E-D, okay. Well, after that also, uh, we can get back to Citizen Kane. I was going to... Oh, that's what Flagstaff? I was Gross. Is I was going to say that I mean, Orson Welles, side. the director, his first movie he ever directed was Citizen Kane. So, this so that guy, was his entrance his, into the movie his industry. First movie directed is the most influential movie of all time which is kind of insane to think about i feel like part i think the fact that he was uh he was a brand new director is what made him feel more comfortable to like push the limits of film and try new things because he didn't have any experience before and he's just kind of going in on a new surface and that like in a sense ignorance is bliss but that's Mm -hmm. another thing like if you're a new director you want to make a successful movie like you want to make something that's kind of like generally fits the bill i mean because you don't want you don't want immediately like you don't want to immediately get tossed to the side yeah every new director wants that but not every new director makes the most influential movie of all time Mm -hmm. that's that's almost a rare chance playing around with stuff it can only happen once actually yeah, oh, yes. the most influential movie of all time. Well, it's yeah the same way that what uh, there's no new Michael. Well, everyone says who's the next Michael Jordan. He hasn't been replaced yet. You know, 
I mean, I don't then, think it's, you know, the, I don't think it's possible. Isn't that like a thing where the, like there's something that's so big in something that it's a long time until something can come that trumps that? I think the fact that it's so old and was so revolutionary, revolutionary for its time, that it would be damn near impossible for someone else to have another movie, another singular movie, to have as much of a reputation as this movie has for mm-hmm. being influential. Because, like, there are good movies. Like, I feel that every Wes Anderson movie is unique and good in its own the way. The Departed. The I can Departed. respect every Christopher Nolan movie. And they're all what about solid the other for, both Don't forget out. Scorsese and Tarantino. Yeah, I, 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 I was keeping going. Quentin Tarantino, of course. Martin Scorsese. Like, all of these directors are kind of on, like, the popular side of movies and that there's there's less, con- less well-known movies with just as good directors. But when it comes to movies that you see <clears throat> that are grossing tons of money, these are the big shots. Directors, yeah. That when everyone sees their name, they expect something good, but none of them are going to be dropping a movie that's going to be like, wow, this revolutionized film. Each well, of them is well, trying in their own way to separate from the norm, but it's so... The, the norm narrow for how a film works now, is it's... It's kind of pretty like ner- what is going to be the next big thing to do in a film like the actual the film itself, not the content specifically. Yeah, I feel like yeah. the the only movie I can think of personally that comes to the Citizen Kane reputation would be Pulp Fiction. Pulp yeah, Pulp Fiction is pretty legendary in its reputation. Yeah, and Pulp Fiction itself mainly pays homage to older films in itself, yeah. and following with most Tarantino films. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, you are really out of this conversation. You should have watched the movie. Hey, man, I should have watched the movie. You told mm-hmm. me right. Oh, man, take up the slack. I I've been drafting fucking lore for my D and D campaign that I've been working on, and it's it's taken a toll on me. Mm-hmm. It's like I had to make an entire fucking pantheon of gods. You know how hard that is. I had to create lore for these fucking gods. You just think of one mm-hmm. for like every element and every like you could essentially like copy what no, but all like so here's the religions thing. already do and just no, I did. I I took um through. I took I took gods from the Roman, Celtic, Norse. Take Christianity and, and make Egyptian. it paleo, make it multiple gods. No, and <laughs> and Egyptian gods. And like I'm, I'm currently just I brainstorming. Alex, there's lore an entire ideas. book in English for you to copy off the internet, though, for your lore there. You could just I know, copy but... the Percy Jackson series. Done. Okay. <laughs> Don't. Isn't that just copying Greek gods? Isn't that the same well, thing? The thing is, I feel like it's going to be easier to take personalities in. for each of the gods based off of this actual Greek. Story. Oh, one of my gods is going to be just like a buff Santa Claus. I well, come to terms with this. Yeah, I, but, presents. um, yeah, no, he doesn't give people presents. He's just, like, he's just a buff old guy who runs around really happy and shit. So that's that's going to be one of them, I know that. But I'm, I wrote, my main god in my pantheon, his name is Tewaz, which is actually a Celtic a Celtic god, I believe. He's also known as Tyr. But uh, I had to write, like, I had to write lore that would fit into the D&D campaign. And technically, he's Odin's son. And... In so in the in the lore that I'm writing, I made him Odin's son, but after sealing away this ancient demon called Gol- Golgoleth that I made myself, he uh, Odin like used the last power in his like you know how, you know how Odin has like a power pool that he draws from like mm-hmm. the Odin something. Well, like Odin's now just gone. He just disappeared after sealing away Golgoleth, and then um, Tewaz was holding him down, and during the sealing ritual, like Golgoleth just tore off his arm. So now Tewaz is now the leader of the... He's the main god of the Pantheon because he was, like, the next in line. It's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of stuff. I'm also writing in the uh, album, the Crim- In the Court of the Crimson King. I'm writing the Crimson King into it. And I'm Ooh. taking a bunch of notes from that. Alex, so you still need to show me this album at some point. Oh, dude, you need to listen to it on vinyl. I, Speaking I know. of... Okay. Thanksgiving, Alex, I'm, I'm still playing... Oh, I exclusively, Alex, on Thanksgiving night, I'm going to come to your house with champagne and cigars, so you better be there Thanksgiving night, or else I'm just going to be alone at your house, basically. 
Okay. Where is the Wilkins family having Thanksgiving? I feel like the Wilkins like oh, two miles away, like two miles away actually at my aunt's house. Uh, damn. So like I'll be literally two miles from Alex. But um, that the album in the Court of the Crimson King. I actually speaking of it, I just ordered some uh, speakers. Oh so yeah, I, I saw those in the Discord. I think. They just oh, tore yeah, a fucking have a hole in my vinyl bank player, account. right? What? You have a vinyl. You have a yeah, your own yeah, vinyl player. Yeah, right? I have a record player. I have an amp that my dad just like didn't need anything. There's so like much stuff from home. I still need to take to my apartment now. Yeah. I but, just live off my laptop. I really don't have anything else besides the TV. I had I, a. Printer. I really hope I can. I, I bought a 3D printer as well. Oh I'm using so like an old 13 inch laptop as my TV. You've seen it, Steve. Oh my goodness. All right, let's uh, let me set the picture for the listeners. Matt has an apartment and he has a couch and a desk in like the living room area. I've got a coffee it's a shelf table. lamp, a coffee There's table. There's a fireplace. There's a mantle above the fireplace. Perfect place for a TV. Matt has like a 13 inch laptop on top of the mantle. And the couch it's about, is a good what, 10, 10 feet. feet away. Yeah. No, that's just yeah. impressive. <laughs> it, it, it's it's mainly because I don't have I'm in a one by one. Like if I have people over, it's just hard for me to think about investing in a TV as a good productive decision. Matt, I live in a studio, and I have a TV. Uh, yeah. I have. I literally to... have like a pull out couch. Like my couch is you know those like those circle chairs that you flip open. Mm-hmm. It's like that, but it's a couch. You have oh no, I have a futon couch. couch, but it doesn't fold in or anything. Then it's just a couch. Yeah, but it can fold down to be a futon in the back. Yeah, I've seen it. it can, like, you can like lower the back down. That That's fucking... Sense. The backrest. Okay. It's a well, so I, do, I, oh, I, so does, does the backrest just like, does it like kind of Yeah, it's all basically like, like it, it's like a nice couchy mattress that like it folds up for the couch form and then it folds down for the That's pretty dope form. actually. Yeah, 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 you should come to Dallas sometime and see it. My living room aesthetic is, is well planned out. <laughs> Steve will tell you. The only, like, decoration I have is, like, a poster on my wall that says, uh, no, it's a flag that says, no step on snack. And then there's oh a poster God. behind me that's, like, oh, wow. Nuka-Cola. And then I, I, have I a- love how the no step on snack is, like, I love how it's not politically charged at all. It's just a meme. You have Alex in your room. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's literally the, like, don't tread on me snake, but it's, like, poorly drawn, and it says no step on snake. I, I've met some full-on libertarians who, would, who very much enjoy that flag and, like, believe in it hardcore. I, I, just, I just love how it's, it's like, you, when at first glance, you're like, oh, this kid's like, who the hell is this guy? And then it's just a meme. <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of just my personality in general, though. It's like, who the fuck mm-hmm. is this guy? It's like, oh, he's just a meme. Steve, you know what was uh, crazy with uh, Citizen Kane was, uh, did you get the overall like idea of what was happening in the movie to some extent? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched it and then read a little bit about it. After. Yeah, just how it's about the perspective of all the other people on his life, so nothing in there you can take truthfully, even. Yeah. Oh no. It's just such a weird artistic point to take it as, and. Uh, also reading up on it, one of the first films to criticize the American dream, and I guess that kind of uh, preempts all of those uh, 1950s beats and absurdist writers that come later on from that. Which is kind of weird thinking that it count, it came out right when we were, America was in or the United States was entering World War II to put something up that I guess if you look closely is anti-American in a time in our society even though it was after the great depression it wasn't a a time in our society where like pride in the country was really important especially in war times yeah like a country what really started in 1940s is the kind of a large-scale like citywide consumer economy that had been building up since before and the 1930s just hindered it and when that happened a lot of people who looked towards the american dream of like having it all Mm-hmm. Is it? It starts to look more at itself of like the materialist. Is anything ever going to be enough? Is it ever going to be fulfilled? That's. Uh, it was released at the end of the Great Depression, right? Yeah, well, 1941. 1941. Yeah, no, was yeah, it? 1941. I think it was before we declared war. Actually, yeah, because the the World War II pulled us out of the Great Depression. Yeah. But we were out of it preemptively, but it really just fired up the. Oh war yeah, because we there. because we uh because we were making stuff for all the other. 
countries mm-hmm. for all the other allies. Yeah. There's nothing Man. like a war to bring up country morale and money, but too bad we can't do war anymore, at least to a large scale, because of nuclear bombs. Yeah. Too bad, yeah. It's too bad, I Steve. I was listening to this... Uh, fuck, what is it? The Hardcore History, this podcast where this dude will have, like, six-hour podcasts about, like, really in-depth detail about a topic in history. And in one of the episodes, he mentions that we are in the longest piece in recorded history Oh, yeah, history the, it's the long piece. Like it's the, we, it's the long-standing piece. So, yeah, peace. So it is Quote, peace. Unquote. No I mean, it's relatively have, peace. It, it's no superpower super, peace. No superpowers have fought each other for the longest period of time in recorded history. Directly, yeah. at least. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. back then, people just beat the shit out of each other. I mean, well, for fuck's sake, the, the Crusades weren't even about the Crusades. They were just like, let's just go kill everyone and take their money. I mean, it's not even like back then. This is like, we're talking 70 years. It's not that mm-hmm. long. They <laughs> use vault, my friends. It's kind of scary. Yeah. And then another another fun, a good story that he talked about is that a Japanese soldier in the 70s had to be pulled out of the, oh, the island guys, the jungles in Taiwan because they were still fighting thinking the war was still going on yeah they were uh, pulling them out still it throughout ended. the 70s they turned 80s. that into an archer an archer yeah, arc. I, remember yeah that. I remember that that just that's just like just thinking about like japanese culture and it still is this way well you know, it's so it's many like islands out there hard. a ton of them got left like the logistics they had i don't think were great at the time either so they kind of forgot about all the island outposts they had mm-hmm. it's just kind of incredible to me that a culture the culture that it's you grow the up duty in and can honor, really, yeah. really form you as a person. Like, it makes me feel that it makes me feel less in control of my life in the sense that it seems like a human's personality and a human's rights and a human's values are really malleable to the culture you grow up in. Because these Japanese people are crazy loyal, crazy about honor. I think one story the podcast mentioned, and I'll link like the show channel, is that for a present for a going to war present a mom gave her son who was going to war a blade and she said that kill kill yourself with this if you get captured yeah that's a mom I mean, that, that's what the japanese do it's the honor code to, and everything like, yeah they they, like, they commit seppuku with the tanto it's just like it's incredible it's just incredible to me in a sense because nothing like in our culture is like that at all like we have values, but nothing to that extreme. Nothing yeah. to that extreme. Yeah, I mean, like the Japanese Japanese culture is incredibly interesting, but it's also sort of terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, those people, people are left on the islands. Rates. They aren't even angry over there. They, they just they're were doing it because that was job. Like, yeah. That was what they were told to do, and the fuck it if they won't complete it. And now with the thing with the whole they don't surrender unless they have an, uh, an officer above them tell them to, like they will never surrender unless they're told to yep. by a higher officer, that is one of, one of many, but one of the big reasons why the U.S. nuked Hiroshima, Hiroshima mm-hmm. and Nagasaki, yep. because they felt that i mean everyone's heard this unless the emperor surrendered basically they weren't going to stand down and they felt Mm -hmm. that the only way and they genuinely felt and there's no way to predict the future but the people who decided to drop the bomb the council whoever it is i'm sure you can look it up people who decided it thought that this will save lives in a sense because a war with japan in the pacific where none of them will ever want to surrender will take years years to finish it would take years and you'd kill just so many people trying to get them to stop because they wouldn't stop until you killed them. Which is like really, At least for the most part. Like, which is that's like a just really kinda... fucked up situation morally. Like that is a hard, mm-hmm. hard decision to make. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. I remember like you can hear, you hear all the stories of when the Manhattan Project first su- successfully had a nuke go off that all of the scientists like reactions were like or a lot of the scientists' reactions were, oh my god, what have we done? It's yeah, because they didn't I, even know I've what read, they were building. Yeah, until they didn't the know end. what they were doing until so, like, yeah. the nuke dropped. I don't and think then they, they were just I like, think fuck. They, just in, I knew, like, they knew they were making bombs, but they just didn't genuinely understand the magnitude physically or what and what would happen in the next half a century. how it's going to affect 
I mean, it's still affecting us now. Like just how we said with the seventy years peace, and that we don't have. Full it's because out war of the nuclear because war. Because of nuclear, nuclear war. Yep. Yeah. It makes everything more on an economic scale to fight our battles than with military at this point. Because no one wants to destroy the infrastructure they've built up in the last 70 years because it's so you know much what? more expensive and You know what I do miss? Advanced. You know what I really do miss? And this is going to sound really weird. I miss battleships. Like, you know, the, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Matt? Like those, those yeah. just giant like, metal ships loaded think, with they guns. Were, they were just so badass. Don't they, like, I feel like they were good until... Use, not really. Well, not really, aircraft like, carriers are, but not well, yeah, aircraft have, carriers and because like well, you could just fire just like right a, new, a missile. From well, yeah, but everyone has air defense now. Really, yeah. what's have a big thing is China's trying to build a huge navy of the same quantity and quality of America, and as so far they can hit us on the quantity, but they haven't hit quality. But now they're in their huge economic boom, and they might be able to pull that off with yeah. more demand, like technological advances and stuff. But like overall, we have the highest technology, but not all of our ships are outfitted as best as we could. Yeah. But China's economic boom is actually about to go down. Really? Yeah, this kind Myself. of has to do with... Well, actually, I'm interested in this. Never mind. Go, on, go into more detail about why you think China's economic boom is going down. We'll Mainly, go this is just personal readings and stuff. But in the last... 15 10 years china has gone from do you remember as kids hearing about it just like all the smogs lots of poverty i think i heard a bunch of kids joke about like the pay is a rice grain a day but then in the last 15 years looking at china and everything the growth 800 million people have been out of poverty now or something the numbers they say at least uh we steve remember when we went yeah it wasn't it was not as Bad as it fucking sounded in all the stories it was still you hear. Gross. Like it was gross. Shanghai, like it was gross in Shanghai that. Shanghai was fucking gross. That shit yeah. was gross. That shit was nasty. It was cool, but it was gross. I think That's Xi'an cool. was the city that we saw that kind of was like not the gross modern big those big factory cities. Yeah. Hmm. I just like. But all the all that housing and expansion and stuff, just like any big boom eventually is going to dip back down and they're going to feel that because all the spending they've doing if it's hit a maximum or that and they keep losing funding they're going to start cutting things so then no longer they're not improving things they're removing things to sustain an amount and i feel like at some point as more people get out of poverty level they'll they'll have more i guess it is a dictatorship in a sense so i don't know how this would work but they've moved towards a lot more like democratic sense but their leader is starting to get a personality cult i think i think that's actually going to get you banned in china now that i said that so i'm really sorry for your chinese viewers and we had so many i know i really upset that we can't slander (sighs) the great nation (laughs) i just remember watching the john oliver episode where he kept calling him honey the the the, uh, poo (laughs) <laughs> it's just like what was it oh, i forgot what i was gonna fucking say i just feel like over we talked about this before that like i feel like in america a lot of outrage in talk and politics is a lot about rights because we have mm-hmm. lgbt rights black rights is much better than it was but that was a big deal years ago for like the civil rights movement and those are the big things in democracy nowadays rights equalism and it's kind of leaning towards socialism in a sense but i feel like in china rights are kind of on the back burner and i feel like yeah as people gain more wealth across all like divisions of wealth in, in the country rights will become more necessary because people will have outrage i'm sure protests will happen even mm-hmm. if they're restricted to it ex- to a extent if you don't like batten down the hatches and avoid rights whatsoever people mm-hmm. are going to be upset and people are going to protest and yeah then it'll be less about I mean, trying to be well big china and- more than 120 less than 120 years ago was a bunch of split states and yeah. that's they're kind of holding it together because that's the only way they can hold power in the real modern world same, same yeah. as Germany 150 years ago. Italy, Germany 150 years ago were a bunch of different states. And the only reason they have power is because they've banded together. But there still exists a slight, not nationalism, but provincialism of the provinces they're from. What were the, that they have the believed three them T's? As, Remember the three T's, man? Yeah, uh, Taiwan, Tiananmen Square, and Tibet. Yeah. 
So those are the three uh, things yes, we were told square. when we went to China not to talk about when we were in China. Tiananmen Square people would either probably get offended or not know what you were talking about. Yeah. And Taiwan is just I, how a communist China sees them as the false government because they were the nationalists that got pushed out in the 50s and then Tibet is just a uh, touchy subject for them and, and I think the UN Human Rights Council but that's all between them. Dude, completely different topic. I watched this Vox video about how um, there's like a, an authoritarian, authoritarian conservative movement in Poland, and they're starting to like reject the EU. In the- oh, ew, if we're gonna get into the Balkans and uh, the European Union, that's it. That's that, a, uh, that's yes. an interesting topic. Oh my goodness. Well, basically, that's just a result of all the allies and stuff of World War II basically formed NATO, yep. and all the Western countries got into it, basically, and the East that became the Warsaw Pact that's now liberated is between the spears of the EU, which is trying to get them to join, and NATO, which are two separate things, because one of them is the economic bloc there, and the other is basically... I guess a military alliance in the most general term I can give to it, not being accurate at all, probably. But all of those states out there, the ex-Soviet ones, are basically still in Russia's uh, circle of influence there. And so whoever's going to give them the better deal and all that is going to be who wins there. Because not, most of those states haven't joined. And with immigration and all that happening, a lot of those states are turning to, uh, I guess, yeah, nationalism, border security, conservatism socially... Hungary built a fence, I'm pretty sure, I think. They enact, they elected the first millennial, who is a nationalist. I feel like, and yeah, then, I feel like that's a big problem in Europe at the moment that we kind of don't even think about. And the, the like, issue with those Balkans away. that the Western states really can't have is the, that entire region was owned by so many people, and all those people feel very nationalistic about their areas that they've fought much harder than a lot of the Western nations to have. And they don't want that happening there, that taken. Like Poland, scary. for example, has been fucking stomped over thousands of times. <laughs> they just got their basically secured state. Probably post-Warsaw Pact, but yeah. And now they're moving towards a nationalist, conservative yeah. thing. And that's kind of scary for the countries of the EU. Because the whole point of the EU is to unite the countries in Europe mm-hmm. to avoid a world war. That's it was like the whole... The whole damn reason, and now you're seeing but these countries. The only reason they'd want to join the rules. EU is for better economic rules, and if they can't be influenced to join, that there are these better economic benefits from joining, then they don't want to join. Poland isn't in the EU. They are. They are in the EU. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of guys, the EU just banned memes. Memes. Yes. On what? And the, on they're, what level? they're actively. They're actively like you can't use any copyrighted image. Image. So if you use like a picture from a movie or something, you can't use it. So Wait, it can take like it out. Anywhere and, like, on the internet? What the fuck? In the, in the EU, yeah. It's really funny because or it's either the EU or the UK. I think it's the EU, but um That's insane. Why would they It's really it's really funny because they're making meme me like meme bots that take down memes. What the fuck? <laughs> it's it's one of the funniest things I've heard of in recent times. But it's also just like uh it's a big blow to, you know, the meme community basic human rights (laughs) whoops (laughs) same thing steve same thing Uh, yeah i'm looking at uh how does that happen that doesn't make any sense it's because it censorship is a really big problem in the EU right now. I, I like, think it's, it's becoming really, really bad. Some some hardcore conservatives might say, if they take your Second Amendment, they'll take your first. Not my Yee-yee, opinion, amen, but I've bro. heard that. Yeehaw! <laughs> give me my dip spitter. Where's my Ford truck? I only, Where is I, my Coke can? I only drive Americans. <laughs> we only go to Charlie's Barbecue after Sunday Baptist oh, Church. Oh, dude. Me and my me and my roommate, we were chi- me my old roommate, we were chilling out last night, and we were watching all of the ASDF movies, like back to back. Do you guys remember those? No. Yeah, very very old recollections there. The ASD, like they're like <coughs> weird random like skits that were like drawn, so funny. There was one where it's like, "Hey little baby," and the baby goes like, "Wah," and then it's like, "Hey big baby," and the baby's like, "Wah." And my roommate just looked at me and just started crying. Like, he slapped the table and just started crying. It was the funniest thing. Holy shit. I am... 
There is a four thousand dollar vinyl record cleaner that I'm looking at right now. Just, just please don't buy it. Please. Why don't. in Why in God's name, Jack? I mean, Jack. Sorry, Jack. Matt. <gasps> I got called offended. DJ last podcast. You just called him our guest, Jack. Going it happens. Head. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A lot goes on. I'm head. genuinely upset in the lack of. Uh, downloads on Jack's podcast because I felt like the content, what was the content focused on there? I felt like it the was, content was great. Like I felt like the I'm content, really hurt. My story time didn't get a, didn't get a lot of views. That hurt me. I felt like the content was on par and good compared to most of our episodes. But I, I no one gave a shit. I mean, maybe because maybe a majority of our audience is probably. St. Michael's people and relate people related to St. Mm-hmm. Michael's people, and they, most people, of them uh, don't them know, know yeah. who Jack is, so they are less inclined to listen to it. I think is probably yeah, of course. why. I feel like Jake Galuli garnered uh, quite a view because he has a much larger following than Jack, probably in that sense. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. that too for sure. But like, no one, which is which is like which sucks because like we should make podcasts based off downloads, but Cont- at the yeah. same time. We want to grow an audience to reach more people, so we mm-hmm. have to think about it too. We can't just not even think about the downloads. But they are. It hits really... the po- it hits the point when it becomes from a personal podcast to like how you if you want to grow an audio ship, there's things you have to sacrifice there in the more personal sense of it being a personal project. Yeah, yeah we can't just name drop Matt project. Wilkins in every in every episode. Anyway. Yeah, you have to find top ten like at least the last episode. I'm not gonna say last names anymore. I guess we're. T- oh, we yeah, actually, yeah. Never mind. We I added his Twitter on our Twitter, and he he gave me permission for that. So I asked Matt. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we're not name dropping people. No, it says it says Charlie. What is it Charlie Perry? It's it, it was it was a name for another another book that never got made. Well, man, Charlie four twenty, bro. You can, you can it change, wasn't Charlie Paris it. was taken. Oh, I Twitter can. Handle. Oh, I would advise you. Oh, to cool. You know, yeah, so you can change it to Twitter handle. Like yeah, I hate. Actually, walk me through this right now on the podcast. <laughs> It'll be helpful to viewers. Because Charlie, I have to log Charlie back Paris in. 420. The 420 is probably what kills it. Like, well, I couldn't <laughs> get Charlie Paris. There were already that name was taken. What about Charlie underscore Paris? You're huh? telling me you didn't select Charlie Paris 69? That's a prime candidate. What the fuck? Did not <laughs> Charlie, overlap my Charlie own. 69 Paris. <laughs> These are all prime ideas, Matt. You could have been. You could have been Charlie. Char- not Charlie Paris there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's Paris. literally the it's literally the top thing if you go you know, so if you're on your computer looking at your Twitter, if you go to settings and privacy, the first thing I have to figure out my login again. Give me a second. Username. You know what Matt, you know what Matt even better. Why don't you just do Matt Wilkins? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest here, Alex. Okay, I found the changer thing. Okay, yeah. Fuck found no. it. Uh, so it. It has to be like no one else can have it, but you can change it. Like my my personal Twitter is Stephen Shermer on a lowercase in a space, which is nice. It's a really good one. I wish we had that for Tall and Taller. Matt Wilkins seventy three. There we go. My my personal account. I also need to change that for other reasons for later on in life. Uh, you know. Uh, where's my lettuce? It's at where's my lettuce? Uh, oh yeah, it's at where's my lettuce. My name though is Discount Joji. Yeah, but you go in the name doesn't matter. You can make the name whatever the hell you want. If someone has the same name as you, it doesn't matter. It's just the handle that has to be unique. Yeah. I mean, hey. I mean, you know what we could do? We could message Twitter and be like, yo, this person hasn't used Tall and Taller in like 14 years. Can you just give us the name? I know, like, like actual okay. yeah. companies do that. Like yeah. uh, Casey Neistat, for example, is uh, building a office space in downtown New York where it's meant for like low-level small time YouTubers to come and be in like a creative atmosphere and build better content. And he calls it 368 because the address is 368 Broadway. And uh-huh. in a video he uploaded today, he talked about how he got the the handle at 368 on Twitter and Instagram. Uh-huh. So, but yes, it's possible. Uh, yes. You will either have to DM the person who has it and ask them to change it for like money or you ask Twitter if they're not responding. Yeah, because like a lot of the accounts are Twitter are just accounts people haven't yeah. used in like forever. It's kind of like a domain name purchasing. Yeah, if someone owns it and you want it. Yeah, because like like I know the guy who had Apple dot com sold it to Apple for like a lot of money. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so yeah, the person who has at tall and taller is Kendra Hankins. They have one follower and they're following no one. <laughs> no tweets, yes. no nothing. Tracking no pictures, costs. No nothing. I'm going to slide in the DMs real quick. I, I doubt they've ever been active. They probably haven't. But yeah, time to get the Twitter handles. Oof. What other topics do we want to jump into right here at the end? Because it's looking like our last 10 minutes of this hour. Ooh, what could we Let's jump see. into? I hmm. still have that damn song stuck in my head and it pisses me off. You're such a fucking <laughs> hoe. Damn. I love, I love it. it. It's I'm a, a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck. I don't like I'm that. Cancel, cancel, cancel. <laughs> we just lost half of our viewership, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> damn. This doesn't show our video chat, right? Where's no? It doesn't. Where's okay, Where's Matt's good, yeah. ASMR channel? Where's Where's the Matty B. Wilkins? Dude, I've been thinking, I've been thinking it's it. hey, no, the new hair. It's Matty Ice. It's Matty Ice now. Matty Ice. Matty Ice. Is it, yeah. We, is, hey, is, is, it, is it? Are you based Matty on? Matty B. Based can't on, uh, be. Matty Ice can't be much better than Matty B. As like who they actually are. Is it like? Are you basing off? You're basing a new persona off of Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's That's the perfect person. Yeah, I, dude, he has a movie. Did you know? Uh, did John Tron made a movie, made a video about it, and it's one of the funniest things of all time. Ooh, fun, so fun aspect. Going back to that MGK and M thing, who else wants to watch Eight Mile again as a person? Such a fucking good movie. I thought. I mean, yeah, I've never seen it. Oh man, I think it's on Netflix still, isn't it? I also I haven't seen Pulp Fiction. Year. Fight me. Yeah. You like at this point, at this fuck. point, everyone's telling me to watch Cup. Alex, I think you're just a bad friend at this point. Yeah, doesn't yeah. watch Citizen I'm kidding, Kane. I'm kidding. Podcast. <laughs> Ask yeah. his guest to watch it. Is this what the show is? Is it a gotcha? We're gonna make you do <laughs> no, no. three hours of. Something? I never, Matt. I never said. I never said watch it. You just called me and you're like, I'm watching. Gonna go watch Citizen I Kane. Said, because like, okay. Steve told me to watch it. Because last week you said we are watching Gran Torino. I said it. You're gonna do it. Fuck you. Literally what but you, you watch, said. Literally you watched like said. the first half of and it. And you, know, you know what I did? I watched it. I watched it. With the expectation. I watched all of it. Grand Wait, Wait, then who didn't watch all of it? That was Isaiah. That was Isaiah. Oh, and shit. I, watched all of I feel it. bad now. And in the expectation that I could choose a movie and you would watch it. You know, how about this? I'll watch it. It's and then I'll do it in the next podcast. Why, why would we do that? <laughs> no, no, no. Like I could just like give my personal view on it. I don't know. I mean, how about this? How about you get another week? You get another week, man. I feel bad now. Alex, uh, how do you feel about all this? What do you... What? He's showing us his apartment. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's larger than my place. Yeah, well, you have a studio, right? It's all one room, right? Like, the kitchen's, like, yeah. right across. Like, I looked to my left, and I could see my kitchen. Unlike right. on one... Are those one concrete end, roofs there? Yeah. Ooh, wait, are those the nice kind of windows behind you, or is that a wall? Are that's those floor thing, to ceiling? Wall, yeah, floor to ceiling window. I'm not a huge Ooh. fan of that actually. Really? Yeah, not that a is... huge fan of floor to ceiling. Why not? I, I, well, I usually because they come with concrete at like apartment level. I just like, I just don't like, like I like natural light, but I like being able to control my light. Oh uh, yeah. I feel like you I'm like you, a lot of the time like, I can. You're like you have a long night of fucking destiny and you stay up till 3 a.m. and then at like 8 a.m. the sun wakes you up and you're like fuck these windows. <laughs> yeah, fuck man I, the glare. And then you realize it's 8 a.m. and you you don't want to remember that so you close them. Oh god. And then you don't want to buy like some big ass bougie curtains to cover that much like landscape of window <laughs> like i would be fine with it if they gave me like blackout curtains but like like with the choice of like not like you know like you know like this it blocks out the light but not all of it i think like just... this with a second layer of blackout curtains that'd be that'd be nice i think they're just uh they're going towards for the norm and then i'm not trying to shit what, what, you, trying a normal to person, say, a normal grown-up person wakes up at like seven or eight in the morning and goes to work earlier than that i think I'm, man i wake up at like i may i wake up at like eight or nine and get ready for class i think fucking what's his name dominic was like dude i hate waking up early i'm never gonna do it i'm never gonna have to do it and i googled it really <laughs> quickly and i was like all right i'm gonna google the normal time for an average worker to wake up like the average person in america it's like seven it's six a.m yeah oh Damn. really yes i mean nine to five nine to well, five yeah, I there's wake people up, i wake up, up at seven 
And I'd like spend an hour, the hour and a half is, getting is ready. A lot of people, what I feel like we don't know is a little, the commute usually is an hour on its own. For me, my, my commute was like 30 minutes tops. And I live like across the. Like, it matters the if you can. Ch it matters when you work and like what. If you have like a basic nine to five, yeah, you're kind of screwed That's traffic right. wise no matter where you live. But like. When I worked my hair receptionist job in South Austin, that's fifteen, like ten to fifteen miles south of me. But I worked from nine thirty to seven thirty. Oh, so you and so I dodged, yeah. yeah, I dodged traffic entirely because that's, that's the hours great. of that business. But like, yeah, for the jobs that are like degree wise that we'd want at the end of college, most nine likely five. end up in the schedule. Yeah. Okay, I found. I mean, I found the graph. To be fair, I really liked working a nine to five compared to school. Because yeah, you go to work, you get paid. You go you to do. work, you get paid. You come back, and you don't worry about it. And you're actually interested to some extent in what you're doing yeah. because you get paid. Like I had a really good time just chilling out, listening to music, and building stuff with my. Uh, with that's my, that's with my what I do right. at Bleacher Construction, Alex. Basically, too. Look at that. Yeah. Chill out with my coworker, build stuff, and listen to music. So the majority. Nine thirty to ten. Majority. Yeah, of like people I people wake up between six and six thirty. When my sleep at the beginning of the year, when I wasn't like uh, my sleep schedule, I'd like go to sleep by like midnight, and now I'm trying to get back into it. But this week has just been weird, just because I just yeah. I usually try it. to get myself in bed by eleven because I know I'll I'll already just impulsively want to yeah. watch like a Netflix episode or something before I go to bed. You, For me, I watch I it? watch Halo lore videos. I go to, I go to sleep to an episode of Ballers. Ballers is wow. isn't that, it's Dwayne the Rocks Johnson's HBO show. It's pretty. It, it's I, I forgot there was some Netflix show I saw that made fun of Ballers a lot. One of their like new originals that wasn't that great that I just put on the background. I mean, what I used to like do the greatest TV show of all time, but it's interesting. It's just like background noise. Yeah. What I used to do is I used to every night before I went to sleep, I used to put on a John Mulaney comedy special, and I used to listen to that as I went to sleep. Yeah, I usually put on like a show I've seen before, so I'm not that interested in the visuals yeah. of it, like Scrubs or something. And it's just background noise usually i like like a 20 minute episode because i'll take like a melatonin or something and by the time it ends i'll be sleepy enough just to get to sleep yeah matt do you take i know your brother has a problem with this do you take melatonin to sleep like uh, very unoften usually like it's only if okay. like it's like if I've been trying to get to sleep for like an hour or something and can't, I usually take one. Don't try to use it often. Melatonin scares me. I don't know if I... I don't think I've told this. No, I think I did. Like, on one, first or second episode, I talked about how my mom... Me growing up, my, I watched my mom not be able to sleep unless she took Tylenol PM. Ooh, yeah, get, getting to sleep. It Tylenol to fucks your liver, dude. Yeah. Getting to sleep Tylenol's is so one of those, like, man. hardest thing for humans, definitely in the digital age. And really? when we find something, well, you look at so many screens, you're stimulated. Like they advise, even like before you go to bed, don't look at screens for thirty minutes. Yeah, it makes that, your body like, feel more awake. It's if you can find a crutch, if you can find a crutch or something that makes you go to sleep easier, you'll keep doing that because it has a very good reward for you. I mean, they um, achieve. Which is why they I try they to read. I wish I would read more. Yeah, that's so something nice. that you can definitely try. It's just a lot, because even reading to some extent is being a lot more applied to the digital age these days. Yeah. What were you saying? Alex? Which, you just gotta look for those devices. I mean, they, they imp they've been implementing stuff in computers, and uh, I know yeah, iPhones I mean, have it, but I mean, it's like that temperature lap, thing, which filters out blue light. Shift, but I never fucking yeah. use it. I mean, phones do too. My set mine, it turns on after 8pm, and it's like, not a lot, but it's like, it's enough. For and computer enough brightness, good. I feel like I'm either at maximum or minimum. <laughs> There's no yep. in between. Maximum when you're at home, minimum during class. Mine, so yeah, like, mine is just auto to where I never ever really touch it. Like it just works. Wow. Well. Uh, Steve yeah. over here. It's kind of really, like, uh, like it's like a phone. High tech. Where, like, mm. how often do you actually change the brightness on your phone? Only on like in like specific weird like occasions, but most of the time it can. It's aware of when you're inside and then when you're outside in the sun, and it will change the brightness yeah. accordingly. Oh no, I turn I turn that off. I, I I manually do it. Oh yeah. Well, it does save yeah. battery if you're if you're like concerned about that. But I'm not usually worried about my phone's battery life. Yeah, I'm I'm excited because this year I get my phone upgrade. I've had my phone for two years, Ooh. so then I'm gonna be able to get the new iPhone. Oh, which is the, the newest one? I think so. I think that's There's what the three. upgrade gets. There's oh great, there's probably not. the big one, probably not the big one, but like the one that's the same size as 6s plus. 
Because I dig this phone size. Because it's enough for like media and stuff, and it's not too small. Holy fuck! It is like twelve hundred dollars. The biggest one, the nicest and biggest one. Get it's, that upgrade, boy. And that's but the, that's it. And that's at the that's base. That's six point five inch. That's at the base um, price. It's scary. So if you want more storage, you'll probably bump it up another. Just make sure you get a case for that hoe. Yeah, that's like that thing. That's crazy. The thing. That I have has, not yeah. broken a phone in my life of owning a phone. Knock on wood. Besides my flip phone, dude, I Alex, is that is that what I think it is on the video? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Matt. Nice investment. Oh yeah, thank you. Alex invested in a jewel. I do not know what you're talking. <laughs> Man, you're about. going so mainstream now. You used to be an anti Apple guy. Now you're on the jewel wave like, too. Next thing just I know, like, you're gonna have a MacBook. Next thing I know. No, he's getting the icy hair just, and the diamond, uh, the diamond earrings. You guys really had to call me out, didn't you? You guys just had to call me out. Like, like when I when I okay, well now that it's out in the open, I just want to talk about it for a sec. The engineering on this thing is really impressive. Just everything about it is pretty high quality. Yeah, I was really glad I was able to sneak it into my high school and into the bathrooms as a kid, and I think that's why they're facing flack People right now. The Apple of Matt, for your reason. mom, wa- your mom listens to the podcast. I know. Now. I was about to say that, but since we're already talking about jewels, we might as well get into it. She knows you vape. She knows. You yeah, smoke. she knows. She knows all of us did. She never caught me, Steve. She caught you before or she caught me doing something she's, ever. She's never Matt, just seen me with weed, but I've been. Downstairs. Oh, wait, no. You I've were with downstairs. Jake that time, right? One time I was downstairs in. Uh, I think I was downstairs and Nathan went out to the back porch to smoke. And I was, I was already high as tits and I'm like, I'm good. I re- and I was sitting inside on my own, just like out of my mind. And the next thing I know, I hear Donna coming down the stairs. I'm like, Nathan, Nathan. <laughs> Wait, beyond too late. Didn't work out. And Donna walks right by me. She's like, hot. She's like, hi, Steve. And then walks right into the backyard. I'm like, Nathan, quit smoking weed in my backyard. <laughs> I think, I, oh, my God. I was, in, I was in France when that happened. And I got a phone call, like, at 7 a.m. That was yeah. Nathan. It's like, we messed up, bro. Can yeah, you call mom like, and apologize like, for us? I think that, yeah, because I, I planned this. I had to make an international like time, phone call like the one to, like, I apologize. To spend the night at your fucking house. We get busted for smoking. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> and I had to internationally call and apologize for Nathan. That's yeah, funny. I, dude, I, I love your parents so much. They've always oh, been no, so they're nice the best. whenever I'm there. They love all of y'all still, so. Yeah, yeah except for a choice few. Well, they know everyone who's still around, and they like everyone so far. Michael's at Purdue, and Jake's gone. They're all east and north. Yeah. Man. I want to go back to Austin, but I also just, like, it's a lot of effort. Well, Thanksgiving, you'll be back for sure, right? Unless That's you're true, gonna... yeah. I'll be back for Thanksgiving. You're not going to abscond to Canada, right? No, actually. I assume that, the new... that Thanksgiving would be at your house. Yeah. It's gonna be a huge Thanksgiving thing at my Is house. all the family gonna come? Yep. Oh boy. Cool. Thanksgiving with Don. Your aunt is my favorite. My aunt. She loves you guys so much. I, I know. It's, it's actually oh really God. funny. At the, at the party, she at the end she couldn't stop saying goodbye to like all of us, I think. Yeah. Oh man. Mm. Wilkins Thanksgiving, getting all all the extended family together. Right here, some information about Matt's family was brought up that he wanted us to get rid of or cut from the podcast, so we lost about 20 seconds. Sorry about that. Well, we'll cut that part out. And let's just well, it is the ending here. and all. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for listening, y'all. Thank you. Steve, what the hell was that? It was really great to be a guest on Tall and Taller as a medium guest. Medium, medium size. A medium, an upper medium, I would like to say. I think six foot counts for that here at least. Maybe Jack, maybe Elijah. I think it's Elijah. Definitely not Isaiah. Probably not Jake. Ouch. Isaiah's short, man. Who knows he's short? Isn't Jake like six one or six two? Chubby, you need to hit the gym. (laughs) Oof. I mean, that's a little, like, like that's how our relationship worked. Like, we would go to the gym together and shit on each other, but we knew we were homemates. Like, I mean, it's just, that's, that's how it is. 
Yeah, I mean, I shit on I'm, you, Alex, but I, you know, mm-hmm. you're a good, good-ass friend. Who cares? Uh, fair enough. Alex, if you want to get into strength training, just start doing the 100 push-ups a day, and that's all you got to do right now for that. Alex yeah, didn't have the motivation to watch a movie. I don't think he's been doing 100 push-ups a day anytime soon. <laughs> Not even <laughs> Citizen King. <laughs> 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 10-kilometer run every single day. If you yeah. build up to that, you'd be fit as fuck. Fucking when are you, Casey when are you guys that ran four marathons, the equivalent to four marathons in a week. Yeah, fuck that. That's that's 100 miles or more, more than 100 miles, yeah. Yes, that's fucking mind-blowing. That's basically a half marathon a day, more than half a marathon a day. Yeah, he's a freak. I would say maybe one day because I don't feel like like was it like did he do it all at once in the day I or wish I could get that addicted to running he would he, yeah. he uploaded a video about it it's a uh, he talked about like how he was on vacation for the end of it and his wife was pissed at him because it's just like a goal he set for himself and, like, and he kept running. running so much but he's like addicted to it like run, so it's it's kind of legitimate thing. Like oh, I, yeah, I, know. I used to run cross country swimming. When you when you cross the finish line in a cross country three mile at like a good time and you feel good and you're finally done running for the last twenty minutes, you just you either walk off very slowly or just collapse and you're like, holy shit! It I just ran good. three miles. I I don't run much. There all is the some dry heaving a couple times. All the running I do now, I used to run like try to run two miles at the end of all my workouts now i just warm up with a half a mile on the treadmill which is like i want to start doing swimming i want to i want to get back into swimming that's one of my things i want to do but i need like i guess i don't really need someone to do it with but that that would be like optimal i guess yeah l- because if i'm by lift- myself i'm gonna be like Phew. when it comes to lifting it's much better with a part or like a dedicated mm-hmm. partner because you haven't because you're less inclined it, to skip a day because you have someone relying on you what I've yeah. learned the best too is to just make yourself your best partner because the best is if you have a set partner and then they like miss out a lot of their gun and vacation and you're relying on them to work out, that can create an issue for you yourself there mm-hmm. if you put off too much time. I've but as long it. as you can keep that dedication to keep going on your own when in those times they're not available to go. I mean, the best i've ever been when it comes to like dedication and like sure results was second semester senior year me isaiah and elijah would go to golds at 6 a.m every morning before every day of school and like yeah for, now like, a fair amount of that i played basketball for three hours at hours after school every day and like some days someone would miss, i like i had oversleep sometimes isaiah would oversleep sometimes elijah would oversleep sometimes We'd usually be gripey as fuck. Like, I probably, I probably, they probably saw me at my worst because forcing myself to wake up at 6 a.m. sucks. But then again, we would shit on each other if we didn't wake up. So, we, like, there's almost like a guilt for not going. And that is what yeah. really kept me going. And that's much, much more motivation than I'll ever have on my own. Yeah, I have, I have Sam and Sam, uh, a buddy who lives across the road. You, you know him at least, Steve. You and yeah, I just, Sam. I drag. I drag him along because now, yeah, his girlfriend wants him to work out, so I just drag him along. And then, yeah, more as, a, like, a personal trainer, I just know I have to keep working myself to be, like, keep that role there of being, like, the trainer. I don't know. It just feels cool. I, That's all I got to put in there for input. Can to like be you real. I tried to lift with you. You're so out of this conversation. We, I tried I, Steve, we haven't summer. lifted together in, like, a year now almost. Yeah. I mean, you tried to make me do those supersets back at the school gym at UTD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're just, like, if you're consistent, it, it, it does wonders and you eat well. Yeah, um, now that I have a lot of time in my mornings, it's just the easiest first thing to do to get myself out of the way is just make my bed, my abs, and then to the gym. Yep. It, it makes a world of difference. Anyway, mm-hmm. I think we're winding down. Right. Now it's the yeah. reason in this conversation. <laughs> It just but makes me think. Is it shit, is it okay I mean, that I stop the podcast? Like, do, have we stopped it, it yet? Don't do it. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll I don't know. We're right. so. Wait. What did you say, Alex? Uh, it makes me think that I need to. I've been thinking about trying to start, and I asked my friend to make like a, dude, a thing for me because I have a gym like just downstairs. Dude, literally, as many push-ups as you can in the morning, as many sit-ups as you can in the morning, 
and eat better. That's all you need to start with. Literally okay. all you need to start with. That'll make Ooh, wait, more... Steve, let me grab something to show you that I got for workout. One sec. Uh, wait, no, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> wait, can I wait? Do I not <laughs> leave? Hey, go... No, not yet. Not yet. We're going to stop. All right. Thank you guys for viewing. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that motherfucking like button. Great being a guest on here. Matt Wilkins, 73. YouTube has a like button, but uh, Apple doesn't. Rate okay. us. We got a rate, rate us. by someone who claimed to be better Steve, who I think is Steve. Ah, name drop. There we go. Mm. We said we'd stop doing that, oh, Steve. fuck. But anyway, Steven Bleep, um, I'm glad you're listening if that was actually you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, Matt, what would you like to? What would like the word to be? I don't. I don't know why I still do this word thing. No one. I mean, we can keep doing it, but I haven't. No one appreciates the word. Today. Adios, bro, chachos. Bro, chachos. Bro, the word. chachos. Oh my god, I'm having flashbacks to high school. All right, let's end this bitch. Yeah. Fuck. All right. <laughs> Peace. Peace.